Hi, this is Paul Chima, sales representative with Remax Professioning. In my series to find those people who can inspire others, I came across Mr. Baldev Mutha. Mr. Mutha came to Canada in 1968. That's correct. At the age of 18 years. That's correct. And this was amazing that when he went to the age of 38, he had a grand plan to help the community. So, well, at that age, I was not thinking on these lines, but I would just salute Mr. Muta that he came across uh, such a noble idea and he fought so many uh, negative ideas, so many dark thoughts that he eventually succeeded in establishing Punjabi Community Health Services. It has a couple of branches and uh, we'll speak with Mr. Muta just now and find out how he came over all those negative forces and uh, and get inspired from him. Mr. Muta, thank you very much thank for uh, the coming on the camera. You are the first series I'm shooting. Yeah. And uh, I strongly believe that this is going to inspire so many people to come forward Gee. and follow your uh, guidelines. So Mr. Muta, uh, I would like you to give your um, anything that I have left in, in my introduction to you. I think, I think uh, um, uh, one of the things that we have to be uh, cognizant of is the fact that every human being wants to do good on this planet. Uh, some people uh, get a chance, some people get a chance but do not take advantage of it. Really nice. Some people, uh, for a variety of reasons, um, do not follow their their own intuitions of doing good and some of the people get motivated for a variety of reasons into short-term quick results but end up messing up their life very well uh, my grandfather I was inspired by my grandfather and one of his tenets to me was that if you really it doesn't matter what you uh, where you go, what you do in life, remember our religion's cornerstone is to do seva. Absolutely. Right. If you do not do seva, it doesn't matter how rich you are, what kind of a Sikh you are, and how knowledgeable you are, what is your credibility and status, it will mean nothing. Absolutely. Right. So in order for me to understand it, it took me about 30 years to understand what seva is. So I thought that if we give a little bit of money to uh, the Gurdwara or to the poor people, that mm -hmm. I have done my seva. Later on, when I started understanding that seva is seva or donations or charity is not just with money. If we can alleviate the suffering of people or of humanity, I think that is the height of charity or donation. Very nice. Very so nice. we can donate our time, we can donate our ideas, we can donate our compassion. Absolutely. And, and the, I would say that giving money should be at the last part. Because people become egocentric when they think I have donated one million dollars, I have donated hundred thousand dollars, they think they have done their job. Yes. But my uh, uh, learnings from the Guru's teachings and from other learned people's teachings are that in order for us to remain humble, it is important to look at the sufferings of people around you and do whatever we can to make a change towards that. And in the process, uh, if you can alleviate somebody's suffering or if you can guide a uh, a teenager who is now doing drugs and if you can say hey uh, it's good for you to go to school and for somehow that child listens to you and 15-20 years later meets you somewhere and says uncle do you know that you changed my life and you may not even remember how and you say no I don't even know you but yes you said this one word to me and somehow I started listening to you and that was it and I think that is much more satisfaction, much more rewarding than any kind of financial contribution that one can make. That is so true. I fully agree with that. If you can bring a smile on someone's face, yeah. then this is the highest form of seva or service you have done to the mankind. 
So I, I, I also agree to your thinking that paying some money down as donation and then thinking that you have done your job. Well, to some extent, yes. Right? If the money is being used accountably and someone is keeping track of it, sometimes it's misused, like we saw in some issues yeah. where it was used for fighting legal cases. Right. Well, not a good thing. But this seva that you are doing, the service to the mankind, I think this is the highest form of service you are doing. And 30 years was a long time, but you, I think you kept on your focus. Yeah. So one of the lessons I'm going to leave to young people who are aspiring to become CEOs yes. or who are either setting up their own business or doing whatever they would like to do. During the um, uh, course of the struggle to establish something, yes. everyone faces hardships. I don't think that anybody that has established their own company or their own business or whatever else they wanted to do, that yes. no hardships were encountered on the way. Keeping a focus is very important and believing that you will attain the goal is also very important. Because if you yourself start doubting, then a lot of people are already doubting. So your doubt plus their doubt will destroy that uh, uh, ability and that motivation and that integrity to reach the destination. Perfect. So one of the things I remember from my grandfather was he said, if you want to do something good, start doing it. A lot of people will criticize, ignore them, keep on doing the good and ultimate those people who criticize you will also become your friends and accept them as your friends. Very nice. So, from that point of view, uh, when I started this organization in July 1990, okay. so that's the legal part of our struggle. Before 1990, it was kind of a, on a volunteer basis, helping someone um, uh, with, with paperwork, with reading a letter, with making some kind of an understanding what the problem might be. But from 1990, so if we look at the history of 25 years, yes. there have been many struggles. And one of the biggest struggle is that our community does not understand what social work is. They think that planting trees or distributing longer at the street corner yes. is a social work. While it is one part of social work, but social work also means clinical counseling. You must have a degree. It's a guided profession, just like doctors and nurses. There are some guidelines, stringent guidelines, but we can afford. Very I true. think a lot of community doesn't understand that part of social work. Well, uh, I'm one of that community who doesn't understand this part. Like, I was reading your biography where you said that you went to Humboldt College to do this degree. Right. So I was just thinking, why do a degree for doing some social work? Right. But yeah. You clarify it. Mm -hmm. So basically, you have to be committed to, you, to your thoughts and then do the action accordingly to reach that particular goal That's that you have set up. Yeah. That's really amazing. Something I am going back with a new learning today. Yeah. I never knew it. Yeah. So when people come to us, they are almost broken. They are broken either by addiction, mental health, or they are broken by age, mm -hmm. by financial problems, by uh, husband-wife conflict or their children are not listening. So when people come to us, they are virtually in a broken state. So very we, vulnerable. Uh, very vulnerable, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. very vulnerable. So it is our job to make a proper assessment what the main problem is. So sometimes a person says, uh, I'm going, I'm going, I have to declare bankruptcy. But actually the problem is not bankruptcy. Yes. Although we know that I, that person is in financial situation, yeah. but we need to find out why did it happen? Absolutely right. So th then we find out, that, oh, this person has an addiction problem. So now uh, we find out, okay, why does he have an addiction problem? Ah, because his marriage broke down. So then we have to find out, okay, why did his marriage broke down? So then we know, okay, so all kind of no other issues come up. So what started, Originally, that please help me declare bankruptcy now has multiple problems oh, attached to it. I see, yes. So as a social worker, our job is to find out and prioritize and then start working with this person to slowly and slowly put back the life together. 
So that's why we need to understand a lot. So, so when they uh, get a diploma or when they get a degree and then they have to do their masters and then people also do their PhD in social work. But the clinical part is how do you understand somebody's habits, perceptions, behaviors, thinking, feelings, and how do you change them slowly? So that's what uh, uh, the education is all about. So social work is more than just doing some volunteer work. It's doing work to fix somebody's and take away the pain and suffering that they are going through. So cute. So cute. It's, it's a great learning. I'm so thrilled today. I can't even explain to you. Uh, I think I should have met you years early. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Mutha also started some unique programs for uh, youth, for uh, women, for, uh, for men. Uh, I was reading you have a program where women meet twice a month That's and, right. and they go over still going on the same pattern? Yes. So, all the programs that we started back in 1990, they're still continuing. So we have a program for men who are dealing with their addiction problems. Yes. We have programs for young youngsters who are having extreme difficulty with their parents. Okay. We have programs for seniors. They meet every week on a number of days, both in Brampton, in Mississauga, in Malton. Very nice. We have programs where we address domestic violence cases mm -hmm. when we uh, when one of the partners, and most of the time it's husband that gets charged, how do we put back that family together? Very well. So for us, it really doesn't matter whether husband is being charged or wife is being charged or what is happening. Our purpose is to look at, okay, how do we keep the marriage alive? So and what, how can we give, what skills can we give them so that they do not fight? That's a program that we have so we have a variety of programs and we every year we do uh, fundraising so okay. we need close to two hundred fifty thousand dollars raised from the community every year so okay. to run some of the programs which are not funded by government some of the programs are funded by government okay but some of the programs are not funded by government and that's where we need the money and the support of our community to be able to support us in terms of uh, doing very nice and uh, i would be more than happy to share this event uh, for fundraising for the great cause to keep the families intact and weed out the root cause of all the trouble so basically you are stopping families are slightly short of the restraining orders yeah. that is very common in canada right. husband doesn't like wife restraining order wife doesn't like husband restraining order right. So, which leads to further more and more and more and more problems. And when there are some organizations which try to help out, but because, like you said, culture is different, they don't understand our culture, yeah. and the rift becomes wider and wider. It splits up. Yeah. So, so nice uh, so far, I would say. So, we talked about some difficulties in the beginning, right? That when you started, people didn't come along, they didn't fall along. Um, and you referred your uh, granddad's uh, reference here. Before I go further on this question, I want to uh, ask you your granddad's name. Uh, 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 Sardar Mit Singh. Okay. So um, he, he he never went to school. Wow. Uh, he uh, he was he had four sons. So I'm uh, my father was the eldest. Okay. And then we had, I had three uncles. So four of them. Okay. And uh, as a as a uh, uh, my grandfather when he was when my all four uh, sons were small, uh, they sat down and my grandfather decided that the eldest son is good at education and the entire family will send him to school and to push so that he gets educated. Okay. At least one of the person from our family should be educated. So my dad got his uh, BA in 1942 okay uh, and then the problem became that uh, in the village uh, 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 somebody made a remark that <laughs> yeah, I know. right i know so those my, things. my grandfather immediately said okay uh, now that you have completed your ba let's go to delhi we my grandfather did not know anybody in delhi at that time 
It was a sheer determination. So and in 1942, uh, he came to Delhi. He came out of the Pahar Ganj railway station. He took a, a, a tanga. Yes. And the tanga driver asked him, Sardar ji, kithe jana? Kenta pi, udr le paase lachal jidhar Amir sikha de kaara. And then he started going towards it and then he saw a Sardar ji reading a newspaper. And it was early in the morning. Okay. He went there and he said, Why could you go house? Why could you keep away? And that person never heard because in Delhi, everybody greeted Sasri Pa. Sasri Pa. So now when he saw this older person standing, he he stood up and he said, Sir, Why could you go house? Why could you? And then I said, Give me mother's car. Okay, now, okay. Uh, I Punjabi can be Mapna Mundalaya, very good Chattaki Kalya. In a knockery to order. So my grandma oh, really? literally, literally said, I'm gonna uh, you know, have my son stay at your place. Your job is to find my son, and he has a lot of education. He couldn't say BA because he was uneducated, right? He says, Bot padia hai manda. <laughs> Your job is to find my son. And this is precisely his my father still remembers. He says, I don't remember the house number. But he says, I stayed in that person's house. He took me after a couple of days. He, because I didn't have good shoes, so he bought me even shoes. Wow. And then he went to see a white officer. And then he started working. And my dad, before 1947, in 1945, he was hired by the British as a diplomat for the Indian government. Wonderful. So he became a, he was hired as in, in the foreign service. So someone your granddad never knew, never met, he just said, okay, this is my son, take care of him. Okay. You are responsible for his job. And look at the beauty of this relationship. Yeah. The other guy. And he, he took it upon this. himself, right? Okay. He said, "This is my to job. help you out." Okay. And Amazing. I, yeah. So I looked at my grandfather, and my grandfather said, "Look, if you don't ask, nobody knows. You have to Absolutely. ask." Absolutely. And be prepared that sometimes when you ask, that people will say no. Be prepared. Yes. But be also prepared that they will say yes. Very nice. And since that time, I have never shied away from asking. I always ask, and not every time I become successful, but I would say 80% of the time, I'm always successful. Wonderful. And I always ask people, oh, look, there are no three seniors without food. I would like to start a Lunger on Wheels program. So we have a Lunger on Wheels program. Okay. We provide two meals every day senior to senior. So the meals are cooked in one home. Our staff picks those meals, delivers it to seniors. At this moment, we have the capacity to feed 14 seniors. Very nice. Every day, seven days a week, two meals per day. Very nice. So we would like to, we have a waiting list of 45 seniors. That who would need to be fed. So that's why this fundraising that we are doing on March 11th at the International Women's Day, okay. that's why this fundraising is important because the money that we will use will help us to deliver more food to seniors who are going hungry at this time. So unfortunate, but yeah, yeah a good effort on your part yeah. that we are even forgetting our seniors and we can't even feed them now. Exactly. Right? So, kade sochiya bhi nisi ka pi sikha tarm de vich bhi apni ehu di halat au di te apne bujurg hi karan te pukhe ho jahe. Mutta sahab, this is slight deviation from what we are talking. Uh, Sade religious places of the million dollars Chanda Katha on the Pay Apne Loki Jaraki with the donations Kartea. This is a, such a small amount that you need to support your car. Ji. And Ovi, uh, not for your personal gain, just to feed the hungry senior people. So I think this is a cause worth looking at. So if you are listening to this conversation, I would definitely ask you to contact Mr. Baldev Mutta and ask him how you can be a part of this effort, a grand effort, I would say, serving humanity. This is this cuts across all the religions, every ethnicity, every color. This is just to feed seniors. So if you want to come up, well, you're more than welcome to 
Last so they can contact our, they can donate. We have people who donate every month. Very nice. And they specifically say Lunger on Wheels. And so whatever they donate every month, it goes directly towards Lunger on Wheels. So, Very nice. So we have, uh, we have no set uh, money aside to feed seniors. Absolutely. And uh, so from, from that point of view, what I'm saying is that once there is goodwill, there is no shortage of people who are really honest hard working in this world who want to do good. Absolutely. There is no shortage of that. Absolutely. So while we always start, the reason why I so admired your um, uh, uh, Facebook message, that there is someone at, at least willing to look at what good is happening in this world. Because yes. every day we are bombarded by something bad happening. Yes. But who is talking about the world would have by now collapsed if everything was bad. Absolutely. It would have collapsed. I fully agree. But the world has not collapsed. That yes. means that something good is keeping it up. Yes. up. Yes. So I commend you for taking the time to find out people, individual organizations that are on their own effort yes. without any uh, 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 any desire to become famous. But they just keep on doing it. And yes. there was this one, uh, I was just so fascinated that in New Zealand there is this one taxi driver, he and his son every month do longer and the New Zealand, he became the uh, New Zealand uh, citizen of the day. I, I read that. You read that? I read that. I was so video. I said, look, look at this. He was featured in some video too by exactly. some... Um, by some media, mm -hmm. and uh, this is this is the real story which he's doing. Exactly. And we forget it. Most of us forget it, me included. Right. So, talking about your what kind of hurdle you got when you started the when you harbored this thought of helping community. So I'm pretty sure you came over those I negative did. forces. What were the objections? What were they saying you? What you have to disregard that to be successful in your venture i think uh, the initial initial thing was that uh, people uh, always said that he must be doing it for himself so that was the so from hidden agenda means that's right so that asi dekh lange ene koi politics politics vagara ch khada hona ta karke ye aaye gallan karta so that was the that was the first kind of no objection See, so when gradually, and it, it's quite powerful objection that you have to work hard, you have to work hard, you have to work hard. And then there were a lot of people who said, look, everybody knows you now after 10, 15 years. Why don't you stand in election? I said, no, that's not, that's not who I am. That's not my mission. That's not, that's not what I wanted to do. Now, after 25 years later, now they honestly believe that what I said at that time is actually true, that I, that's not my agenda to run an election. So that was one. The second is, I think our community does not understand that in Canada, health care is delivered by not-for-profit agencies. So we are the first Punjabi organization in whole of Canada that is accredited by the province of Ontario. Amazing. Amazing. So there isn't one. Amazing. So one. So Amazing. Yeah. Because it is all your track records. They your, check your they persistence. Check they want to know how your finances are. They want to know how your clinical staff is. They want to know do you have the expertise to deliver. They check everything before they even give you money. So we are still in the baby stages, and our community does not understand that it took 25 years to come here to be where the government actually says here. We have been watching you for a long time. I think you are doing a good job here. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. I think that that does deserve a good applaud. So so nice. It is. Well, I can say 25 years looks such a small number to me, but multiply that by days and then by hours and then split it down and it becomes humongous number. And uh, you are thinking, 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 thinking on how to get over these objections because this is where your force is spent. To get over those objections, to prove yourself the community, and yes, I fully agree with those people who said you get in stand up in an election, and and I can guarantee you success. You yeah. will be successfully elected representative 
But do you think that was not an option for you, or you no. just didn't? No, I. That's not an option for me. I'm not. I don't have the personality to be a politician. I have the personality to be a, a clinical person. I can look at problems. I can solve it daily basis. I can run an organization. And then I'm also a little bit of a dreamer. I, I envision that, like for example, it hurts me, it pains me greatly that in Vancouver we are such a, about 150 young Punjabi Sikh boys have died due to drug wars. Wow. And we do not have an organization that can provide any kind of help to those families and to people who are suffering from addiction. So I'm now looking at this year or next year opening an office in Vancouver. We have an office in Calgary. We have recently opened an office in Ottawa. We Where have a PCHS in Punjab as well in Mocha. Where so we are gradually we are looking at helping the community. If these are stand alone organizations, we don't control them. We just tell them here is a model. Well, we can them. help you set up. You run with it. And every time you get stuck, call me. I'm willing to fly you over. And so. We want that wherever Punjabi community is, whether it's in Mexico, whether it's in America, England, wherever it is, and they have mental health addictions and some other problem, we will help you look at our model and see if you can apply this and, and start helping the community. Absolutely great. Mr. Mota, do you have any message to give out to the community? Yes. Um, मेरे दो मैसेज है जहाँ एक तो ये है जहाँ के जब भी कभी आपने कनाडा के किसी प्रॉब्लम आती है तो उसे हमेशा चीज़ जो कोना तो उसे अपने जिधर थोड़ा फैमिली फिजिशियन हो मेडिकल डॉक्टर हो तो उसे उधर ना जरूर ताल मेल करो अगर तो उनको बच्चे भी प्रॉब्लम आता तो उसे स्कूल के प्रिंसिपल को ले जरूर मार्च ग्यारह नौ से सेलिब्रेट करते हैं तो ब्रेंटन के बीच तो प्लीज उसे तो उसे जरूर आओ तो उसे जेडी भी प्रोग्राम्स जेडी सारे बुजुर्गों के प्रोग्राम्स हैं जहां सारे जरा लंगर ऑन बीज प्रोग्राम हैं जहां बाबा भी भी प्रोग्राम हैं उधर चलते तो उसे माइक सहायता दे के तो उसे उन बुजुर्गों में से for you.com पे जाके जहाँ तो सिर्फ जापी कम्युनिटी हेल्थ सर्विसेज गूगल करोंगे तो उसे भी आ जाएगा। So the same thing मैं अपने इंग्लिश भी रिपीट कर दूँ। The the first message that I would like to give to the community is that please if you are having any kind of problems please contact your family physician. It's important that the earlier that you would contact a family physician the better it will be for you to make a diagnosis and course. Of working towards a solution to that problem. If you are having a problem with your teenager or with your child, please do contact the principal at the school and those principals will help you find a social worker or find solutions to that problem as well. In my 25 years of you know, clinical experience, the longer we wait for a problem to understand and diagnose and find solution, the more complex it gets. So rather than we hiding the problem, it will be much better that you contact physicians who you trust or professionals who you trust so that you will be able to then find solutions to it. And second, we <coughs> always need uh, financial help. We need help in terms of volunteers. And if you have personal experience of taking care of some loved one with mental health, with addictions, or taking care of a senior, and you would like to help out, please contact us as well. And if you would like to donate, uh, please uh, participate in our International Women's Day celebration on March 11, or donate us to our Baba BB program or our <coughs> Langar on Beach program, you are most welcome. And in the final analysis, my whole life experience has been so rewarding, and thanks to you <laughs> that you have given me the opportunity to share my views with the audience. Yes, that's really great. Uh, Mr. Muta, I'm so happy to be here that I think this is the best time I ever spent at any organization and uh, with a clear understanding of what they're doing. So you uh, you told us those things which I just finished reading 
This is a book called Start With Why. And this author, his name is Simon Sinek. It's a very long, lengthy book. And he talks about finding your why and then how and what comes later on. So what is the final product? How is how you're going to reach the what? But the why stays in a portion of the brain um, limbic or neocortex thing. Yeah. So why stays in the limbic portion of the brain and doesn't have language. It just knows that, well, you want to do it, but you are unable to communicate. So I was talking to the girls in your office, yeah. and I think everybody shares your why. Yeah. Everybody has the same aura, same positivity, same welcoming attitude that it never felt that I'm sitting at some alien place with a strong organi organizational setup. You are the boss, they are the employees. I didn't get this kind of feeling, which is really the way an organization should be. The same thing talked by Simon Sinek. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. And for those people, other communities, uh, because uh, Dr. Mutta basically talks about cultural-based services uh, to the community. Our cultures may be different than uh, from those of Canadians. So basically, if you want to take a lead, well, you can speak with Dr. Muta and start in your own community something on a similar pattern. I think with his experience, you're going to cut down those 25 years down to maybe five or six years. Exactly. Thank you very much, Dr. Mota, again. Thank you. Thank so you. appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.